It's a quick video showing uh, my external GPU setup now. So we've got a Gigabyte Bricks Pro. Uh, this is the i5 4570R. Um, and it's running uh, a 1060 GTX 1060 6 gigabyte, um, just in this uh, rather crappily put together uh, little enclosure. Um, so it's connected via a, a GDC Beast uh, version 8.4, um, and connected to the so, so internally connected to the micro PCI, so the Wi-Fi. Um, so it's only a it's only a PCI 2.0 one-time slot, but absolutely shocking really how great it runs um, so, so obviously a few few little game tests here so uh, Gears of War runs along at pretty much 60 uh, 60 frames at uh, I can't remember the exact graphic settings but but basically uh, very high settings at, at 1080p um, which is absolutely perfect so it looks really good and it, it runs fantastic on this one Uh, Street Fighter V um, had no difficulty whatsoever, so, so yeah, 1080p, absolutely max settings on everything, um, and that that absolutely solid 60 frames. So I think I capped it at 60 for the for the TV that it's running on, so it's running on the lounge TV. But yeah, as I was saying, I mean, the, the, obviously a bottleneck from running over a, a PCI. Um, you know, single lane micro PCI, but you know, honestly, the, the performance is, is really, really good. I'm sure someone will tell me how much performance I'm missing out on by by not obviously running this in a in a desktop setup. But that is not the point, really, with this one. This is a machine that was already the uh, basically the the lounge PC that ran you know videos and other things, um, and obviously now it's 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 a very capable gaming machine. So a bit of benchmarking. So Time Spy for DirectX 12 uh, actually shows a little better than uh, than DirectX 11 does, which we'll see in a minute. So this one comes in what three four three five, which um, comparatively speaking actually finishes above their um, their spec for a gaming PC for for VR. So above a, a sort of 970 setup. Uh, Fire Strike, so DirectX 11, um, not as impressive actually in terms of the benchmark. So it lands in um, where are we? 82.32. So uh, yeah, slightly below the 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 sort of standard for VR. I mean, we're obviously not running VR on this, but the the figure's still pretty impressive though. The numbers so. Where that stands in terms of the the original GPU, so this is a this machine has Iris Pro 5200 um, built in, which on these benchmarks it's it's basically about seems to land in about six times better performance um, than the than the Iris Pro, uh, which which is pretty great really. So Tomb Raider's not actually the best performer out of all of these. It sends to and this is on, I think, very high, but it um, tends to sit around 45 to 50 FPS occasionally, going above that. But um, I mean, perfectly smooth enough, and, and a damn sight better than the than the Xbox version looks, which uh, we've obviously played through this previously on the Xbox One. So a lot smoother and um, a lot more detailed than that. So Bioshock Infinite, obviously not such a recent game, but um, but again, yeah, completely flawless at, at high settings. I can't remember the exact again, um, but but very high settings. 1080p runs again. I mean, absolutely flawless. 60 FPS as it plays through. So in terms of the actual setup, very straightforward actually. There was, um, I guess, because I'm not dealing with, you know, a laptop or an internal screen for the external GPU, just putting it onto basically a, a mini desktop. Then there was actually very little issues with the setup at all. Um, it's running the latest 
NVIDIA drivers, which is good. Um, yeah, no, no problems whatsoever. And the, the enclosure obviously was just a, a quickly slung together 3D print um, that seemed to fit, so it was just a box basically made to measure with a few holes cut in it. But, uh, but absolutely fantastic, so we'll get it all uh, neatened up and tidied away. Um, and it's, you know, it's a great gaming PC now.